Hello, everybody. It is time now for Truth, Justice, and the NBA for your Friday, May the 15th of 2015. Now, I know that we're supposed to talk about the Eastern Conference and, uh, you know, Cleveland closing out uh, Chicago, which we'll get to on a future episode, and also to um, Atlanta trying to uh, close out Washington in Game 6 of their Eastern Semis. We will talk about that on a uh, future episode. Uh, but what happened at Staples in uh, L.A. late um, Thursday night or early Friday morning, depending on what part of the country you live in, is still stunning. I'm sure a lot of people went to bed thinking that L.A. had the game won. They wake up the next morning and find out, as Eddie Murphy from Delirious would say, they freaking won? That's right. Houston did something pretty improbable, and that was come back from 19 down in the final 15 minutes of the game, scoring 40 in the fourth, holding the Clippers, who had been hot you know, pretty much the whole game, to just 15 points in the fourth. And by the way, three of those points by L.A. was on a buzzing, beating three-pointer uh, three to close out the game. So, really, it should have been a 12-point uh, fourth quarter for the Clippers. Fortunes turned, and the Rockets unbelievably win the game 119-107. to That series even Steven at three with Game 7 at Toyota Center in Houston on Sunday. So, what the heck happened? Okay, what, what the heck happened? Well, you know, Houston got a great team effort, okay? We know that Dwight Howard early on was a force, okay, because the Clippers got off to a good start, and if it wasn't for Dwight Howard, you know, the Clippers could have run away with it early. Um, as a matter of fact, in the third quarter, it looked like the Clippers, with Blake Griffin playing as great as he did with 28 points, 12 of 20 from the field and eight boards, and Chris Paul with a 31-point game, including 11 assists and seven rebounds, you're thinking, okay, Clippers are going to be fine. And then Houston turned it around. They got a little bit more aggressive, a little more tempo, and they looked like they had a little more spunk in their step than the Clippers did. Over the final three minutes, the Clippers could only manage a Jamal Crawford three-pointer to score in that three-minute stretch. In the meantime, Houston was chipping away at the lead. Dwight Howard was even hitting free throws, which for him is rare. And, by the way, the play of Terrence Jones in the second half especially I thought was instrumental in the huge comeback. 16 points for him. And Kevin McHale's decision two games ago to start Josh Smith and to have Terrence Jones come off the bench in placement has been a brilliant move for both players. And fourth quarter, you know, early on, Houston just kept, you know, hitting their shots, you know, especially from three-point range. In the game, they outshot the Clippers 13-7 to in terms of made three-pointers. The bench play... We know that the Clippers don't have a terrific bench, but once again, Jamal Crawford, he struggled in this game. We'll talk about more about him in a second. He only had nine points in the contest. But the bench play of both Jones and Corey Brewer, they combined in the game for 12 of 22 shooting and a combined 35 points. That was a big reason why the Rockets got back into this game. Although the Clippers early in the fourth quarter didn't go completely cold, they were able to hit some shots, it just wasn't the same. And then over the final seven and a half minutes, it did look like the Clippers went cold. Again, they only had 15 points in the entire fourth quarter after scoring 29 in the first, 35 in the second, and 28 in the third. It seemed like it was a role reversal, and Houston, again, looked like they had a little more um, punk or a little more, um, I guess, mojo in their step than the Clippers did. And we look at the play of James Harden, you know, on a night two when, when Harden didn't play well. In fact, he shot terrible, 5 of 20 from the field. But he did get to the free throw line a lot, and he made all 11 of his free throw attempts. So at least he got 23. But the play of Howard with 20 points and 21 rebounds was essential. And people are going to point to the three-point shooting and say, hey, that's what led to Houston's win. That was part of it. But in the fourth quarter, when the Clippers went ice cold shooting, um, those last eight minutes, they couldn't get second chances. Rebounding wasn't even close. How about this? Houston had 60 rebounds for the game. Clippers only had 41. And second chances, okay, as far as the offensive rebounds, Houston 15, the Clippers 4. That's inexcusable for both Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan, that front line of the Clippers, to be that ineffective on the glass, okay? And they were ineffective on the glass, and that's a big to me, I thought that was just as big of a reason because at least, you know, you know, Houston, the Rockets didn't hit every shot. Okay, it's not like they just went blazing, you know, like crazy. They shot better in the fourth, but they were getting second opportunities as well, getting to the free throw line, and the Clippers looked like they were frustrated, and they weren't that same team that we saw in the first three quarters. Now, why is this? Here's my thinking on it, okay? 
Doc Rivers was going to go with that starting five or bust, okay? Jamal Crawford didn't play well in game five. He didn't play well in this game in game six, okay? The Clippers played nine players in this game. Nine players, five starters, and only four bench players. Crawford played 24 minutes. That's the most that any non-starter for the Clippers played. Just 24 minutes, four of 13 from the field. Unacceptable. Austin Rivers, we see him have his moments in the playoffs. But again, another struggle for Austin Rivers. Two of eight from the field, only five points. He played only 14 minutes. Big baby Glenn Davis, he had two points, only played seven minutes. And Spencer Hawes didn't score at all. He played only four minutes. Okay. My point is that the starting five, the player who played the least amount of minutes amongst the starting five of the Clippers played a total of 31 minutes. In fact, three of the four starters for the Clippers, Griffin, Paul, and Jordan, played at least 41 minutes with Griffin playing 42. Come fourth quarter, the stamina really showed against the Clippers because those starting five had, had were on a pace to play about 40 minutes, and the bench, which, you know, lately has not been that reliable for the Clippers, you know, it showed me that Doc didn't have much confidence in them, and he was going to go, was Doc, with the starting five to see if they could finish it out, and they just didn't have as much gas in the tank and, and Houston did. Okay, the Houston bench again, 37-16. I thought that was just as big of a factor as the three-pointers and also, too, the rebounding in that big, big comeback in which the Clippers were up by nearly 20 points in the final 15 minutes of the game. They can't close it out. So all the pressure's on the Clippers for game number seven on Sunday. And at least it's not on Saturday if you're a Clippers fan, if you're looking for any kind of hope to maybe – um, have one more shot at closing this out because I think if the Clippers had to play this thing on Saturday, it'd be much harder for them to win because you wouldn't have as much time to recover. Okay, so for Chris Paul, one more opportunity to try to get to a conference championship, which is never done before for the Clipper franchise, a chance to get there as well. And Houston, remember, 20 years ago, Houston knew what it was like under Rudy Tom Jonovich, their great coach, who said never underestimate the heart of a champion. And that year, they came back from 2-1 to beat Utah in the best three out of five back when the first round was the best three out of five and came back from three games to one down against Barkley and the Phoenix Suns to win games five, six, and seven, winning five and seven at Phoenix. And then with the series tied at two against San Antonio in the conference finals, they ended up winning the next two and ousting the Spurs that year. And then they swept Orlando in the NBA finals after trailing big in the fourth quarter in game number one. So, am I saying that this is the 1995 Rockets all over again? No, I'm not. But it just goes to show you that Houston, historically, knows what it's like to be down and to win on the road. And if Rudy Tom Jonovich's proverb of never underestimate the heart of a champion refers to this generation, that's a good, good omen for Houston. Again, I'm not comparing the two, but it's just ironic. 20 years ago, we saw that Houston team do big things and this team, when you think they're out, you know, they win game five, and then game six, they dig themselves out of chop suey China and end up getting back on even ground. And now this series is 3-3. Houston will have home court advantage for game seven. And we'll see if the Clippers have the fortitude and the energy and the resilience under Doc Rivers and Chris Paul and Blake Griffin to overcome and do what they should have done in game six, and that is close out the series with the win. Of course, the winner gets Golden State Memphis, Game six of that series is Friday evening tonight from Memphis with Golden State needing one more win to win that series and to move on to the conference championship. What a night of basketball in the NBA. And, of course, the next episode, uh, we will, in fact, I promise you this time, we will be talking about Cleveland closing out the Bulls, and we'll talk about Atlanta and Washington and um, looking ahead to um, that series. Thanks, everybody.